Kentucky. Quite a bounce back game for the Celtics playing Wednesday in Orlando. Smart. Tennis team set off at the free throw line. Shovels back to Horford. Now Jalen Brown catches quick three over. Cole Anthony is good. Man, that dude shoot darts right now. 23 for Jalen Brown. 19 straight for the Celtics. They lead by 12. 98.5, the Sports Hub. Celtics go on to a 92-79 win over Orlando. Boston holding the Magic scoreless for the first six minutes of the third quarter. A 21, uh, plus 21 margin in the third quarter. Their best in any quarter this season. Of course, one quarter that they did have has certainly been in the spotlight this week. Celtics, their last time out, had that collapse against the Bulls Monday. They went from up 14 at the start of the fourth to losing by 14. And after the loss, Celtics guard Marcus Smart said that the team's two young stars, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, need to pass the ball more. That prompted some conversation. ESPN insider Adrian Wojnarowski. When Boston traveled yesterday to Orlando, I'm told, they had a players-only meeting. And Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, uh, they did talk about uh, you know the collapse against the Bulls. And Marcus Smart's comments after the game about those two not passing the ball, I'm told, it was emotional at times. Uh, but in the end, perhaps, not a terribly productive meeting, maybe not even beneficial. Listen, this these are issues with this team and this group that have been going on for a while. They changed the president in Boston. They changed the head coach. These issues remain. And now at 2-5 and five and playing the Magic tonight, Ime Adoka, the first-year Boston head coach, this is a situation that he has to address and help this team work through the way that Brad Stevens and, and it haunted his regime, especially near the end last season. Celtics come away with a 13-point win. In their game on Wednesday, Sixers and Bulls down the stretch. 15 seconds to go in the game, Sixers by two. Curry off balance, hangs, fires, puts it up, and in! Seth Curry scores the ball. It's a four-point game with 10.7 to go. Chicago calls timeout. 97-5, the Fanatics. Sixers a 103-98 win over the Bulls. Philly's eighth straight win against Chicago. Joel Embiid, 18 points, nine rebounds. In the victory. Pacers beat the Knicks 111-98. Pacers first time winning back-to-back -back games this season. The Knicks first time losing back-to-back -back games this season. In Brooklyn, Nets and Hawks. Harden pulls the trigger and buries a three. Big triple by James Harden. All of his field goals, three of them, have been from three-point land. So nine points, 11 assists for Harden. Durant, catch and shoot. You might as well not even watch. You know it's going down. Kevin Durant with 31 points. A 20-4 to run by the Nets to close the quarter. Wednesday on ESPN. Nets a 117-108 win over the Hawks. Durant, 32 points, 15 of which came in the third quarter. And after the win, he spoke with our Cassidy Hubbard. Katie, look, your defense has been a big part of your identity all season, but all offensively tonight, 34 assists. What did you like the most about how you guys competed tonight? Well, I like this homestand. We stayed with our defense. Our shot wasn't falling, but we stayed with the defense. And, you know, uh, you stay with that and you continue to keep fine-tuning that. The offensive side of coming tonight was one of those nights. We was able to make some shots. And, um, you know, 22 threes, I mean, we got up 48. That's what we want. Uh, James, the shot wasn't falling to start, but we saw you got hyped for him in his personal fourth quarter run. Uh, what are you telling him as he's working his way back from this hamstring injury, trying to regain that rhythm? I mean, I, I, I think he's in good shape. I think he's playing well. It's just a matter of us getting used to each other, figuring out lineups, and that stuff takes some time, you know. Uh, continuity, you know, we don't have a lot from last year, so we're trying to build on that, but controlled the game from the point guard position, made shots when we needed to, and we got a good one. Speaking of, Steve Nash, to us, praised your leadership, but more specifically, your patience with this team. The new group, obviously the injuries, no Kyrie. How do you describe your mindset as you guys are tinkering and also have lofty goals? I mean, I'm, I'm happy they stand patient with me. I know we all trying to get better as the season goes on, and I'm not looking at the rest of the team like they got to catch up. You know, but it's just they feel like we all growing and learning and figuring each other out each and every day. And it's good to see that, see the progression and development in real time. And you know, we just keep grinding. That's all I've been saying. Thanks, KD. Congrats on the win. Kevin Durant, sixth straight game with at least 20 points on 50% shooting. Cavs, a three-point win over the Blazers and the loss for Portland. Dame Lillard, 26 points, 10 of 27 from the floor. His fifth game this season with more shot attempts 
than points. Five already this season. He had four all of last year. Warriors a 114-92 win over the Hornets. Golden State ending the game on a 16 to nothing run. 15 points, nine assists for Steph Curry. Sports Center all night, ESPN Radio. Carson Wentz is unvaccinated, right? Every time I've seen him on the sideline, he's wearing a mask, right? When he comes off the field, he puts a mask on. When he goes to shake hands after the game, he has a mask on. Rodgers hasn't done any of that. Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers in the NFL's COVID protocol. He'll miss Sunday's game against Kansas City. Coach Matt LaFleur confirming Wednesday Rodgers is in the protocol. First round pick from 2020, Jordan Love will be the starter against the Chiefs. We saw what happened from this summer on with Aaron Rodgers and earlier on ESPN Radio, Jason Wildey from ESPN Milwaukee. I look back on the way he responded to that direct question back in August. And he was asked if he was vaccinated, and he said, yeah, I've been immunized. And I swear to you guys, you know, I, I've obviously known him a long time. We did a radio show together once upon a time. People love to give me the uh, the mantle of, oh, you know Aaron Rodgers better than anyone. Well, with that, which I don't really like that mantle, but with that, I should have known better, and I should have followed up. Because when he said immunized, I thought, you know what, that's, and he never says anything accidentally, ever. He's one of the smartest human beings I've ever known. There was a reason why he said immunized and not vaccinated. And I, I look back on that, and while I think he was deceitful in his answer, I should have done a better job and said, wait a minute, what do you mean by immunized? This affects, and this has been my argument for the whole, for the whole time, whether you're Aaron Rodgers or somebody else, there is a competitive disadvantage if you're unvaccinated. And the Packers are now going to experience it because, as you said, he's not only out for Sunday, but there's the distinct possibility he won't be able to play against Seattle in two weeks. So he's put himself and his team in peril as a result. Jason, I, I agree with, for the most part, with everything you said. I, I do not want to uh, put any blame on any media member for not parsing those words, even if we know that Aaron Rodgers has a tendency to speak in specific and intentional ways when he wants to obfuscate or when he wants to point fingers or whatever else. He said, yeah. And then everything he said after that was meant to make us believe that he was vaccinated. So it is not anyone's fault but his that we all believe that he was. And it is not anyone's fault but him and the Packers and the league that he has spent the last eight or nine weeks longer than that, really, because back in August at that very presser, he should have had a mask on indoors with media. It is all of their fault right. that he has carried on without following the protocols of an unvaccinated player. What are you hearing around the league and the Packers' decision-making in not following up, fining, announcing, calling out Rodgers? The only thing I can think of is that they all wanted to protect him from this very truth coming out, because had it been mentioned or had he started wearing a mask or been on Zoom instead of in person, we all would have asked that very question, are you vaccinated? Yeah, Sarah, you're exactly right about that. And the NFL did say in a statement earlier today that they are aware of the situation and they will be looking into it. Now, I was told today that around his teammates and the coaches, he has followed the protocols, which requires him to be masked at all times. But unlike Alan Lazard and Devondre Campbell, who have only met with us via Zoom, Aaron Rodgers has been in the media auditorium without a mask on. But there are other potential violations here. As well, he's traveled with the team. According to the NFL rules, he is supposed to travel separately to game. Once arriving in the visiting city that they are playing in, he is not supposed to be able to leave the hotel, and he has limitations on what he's able to do there. Also, outside of the facility with his teammates, there are limitations on what kind of congregating he can do with his teammates. And we all saw the John Wick costume and the kiss mm -hmm. and the dog and all the pictures. And he was with a bunch of his teammates for the Halloween party. So there are a variety of potential violations of those protocols that are coming down. Last year, when the Baltimore Ravens were found to have not been following protocols, they were fined a quarter of a million dollars as a team. I would think there would be fines both for the team and for the player once these uh, issues are proven. You know, Jason, I, I guess, call me skeptical here, but the league says they're aware of the situation. I mean... This is a league that finds players for having socks that aren't the right height. They've seen a player they know is not vaccinated at every press conference. How the hell are they just now becoming yeah. aware of the situation? 
Yeah, Jay, that's true. I mean, think about it. How many times has Aaron Rodgers spoken after games? How many times has the NFL on their social media channels or on uh, their website or on the NFL network run sound bites from him talking to us uh, or shown him on the sideline uh, not wearing a mask. I mean, you know, Kirk Cousins has come under criticism for this. Carson Wentz has come under criticism for this. I can only assume that whether it was the team or the league or both, uh, they were concerned about making the NFL MVP look bad. That doesn't change the fact that he has been in violation for certain. No two ways about it. Since the league informed him, look, your appeal or whatever you want to call it is being denied. You are officially, by our view, unvaccinated, and you are required to follow the vaccination protocols. Jason Wilde from ESPN Milwaukee. Earlier on Spain and Fitz here on ESPN Radio, where all guests are on the Goodyear hotline. More from Jason this morning with Key J and Max Jason joining the show from Wisconsin, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Right now, Sports Center All Night, ESPN Radio. Georgia, Alabama, Michigan State. Who's number four? Oregon. This furthers the point that Cincinnati ultimately does not control its own destiny. They're at the mercy of what transpires in the Power Five. The initial college football rankings were out on Tuesday. A lot of criticism from Different uh, corners of society, including Robert Griffin, ESPN college football analyst. Cincinnati not being in the top four is a clear sign from the committee that group of five schools have absolutely no chance to make the college football playoff in its current structure, right? No chance. And then the fact that Oklahoma is sitting there at number eight as a undefeated, if the season ends today, they'd be an undefeated Big 12 champion, which is a power five conference, and they're at eight. Don't even get me started on Wake Forest being at number nine and the AC being, ACC being undefeated. And in the SEC, it's like, this is not the SEC college football playoff, but there's seven SEC schools in the top 25. It's just very frustrating, and you're telling the Houstons, the Louisianas, the SMUs, the Cincinnati's of the world that not only are they not invited to the dinner table, they can't even park the cars out front. They might as well go ahead and get the, the process of, of changing this structure right away. So when the structure gets criticism like it has again this week, how could it affect expansion of the playoff system? ESPN's Heather Dinich. I think that it's certainly going to add some fuel to the fire, but I don't think there's going to be any knee-jerk reaction to change it because of the first ranking. I mean, this is this is one of the reasons that playoff expansion has been considered over the past however many months, right? It's because they want to open it up to more access. The question is, when does it happen? How does it happen? And what does it look like? I still believe that they're trending towards a 12-team format eventually, but I'm not convinced that they're going to leave Dallas here agreeing on it yet. Keeping our eyes again for this season on the top four. Minnesota and Coach P.J. Fleck have a new deal. It's a new seven-year contract running through 2028. Flex base salary this year, just over $4.5 million. Really middle of the pack for head coaches in the 14-team Big Ten. From Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max each weekday morning, 6 to 10 Eastern. And then Greeny, 10 to noon Eastern weekdays. You're a part of ESPN Nation on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed. ESPN Nation presented by Dr. Pepper. College football's back, so are the fans. Return to glory with Fansville by Dr. Pepper. The one fans deserve. Straight ahead. One player we will not see back on the diamond if we have baseball in 2022. That's next. Sports Center All Night. It's ESPN Radio. Coming up Thursday, the trade deadline is behind us, but that doesn't mean more moves can't be made. We'll tell you the one move two playoff contenders should make. That's Thursday morning. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Max, ESPN Radio. More Sports Center All Night next.